Next up, we've got 10.2 on measures of central tendency. And what these are, these are, these are ways or measures that attempt to indicate the approximate center of, of a bunch of data that you have, of a, of a distribution. So in this section, we'll be talking about three things that I'm sure you've seen before, mean, median, and mode. Um, there's other measures of central tendency, but these are just the three that we'll be discussing, discussing in the section. And we'll start off with ungrouped data, and I'm sure you've done this for ungrouped data, but then we'll move on to group data. And uh, calculating the mean and the median in those cases might be, might be something new to you. But for example, here's, uh, here's the data that I have. It's, it's just this, this sample of numbers, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5. So I want to compute the mean. What's the mean? Well, the mean is, is also sometimes called the arithmetic average. Arithmetic average. And I'm sure you know how to compute the average of things. All I have to do is add them all together and then divide by the total number of, of elements that I was working with in the first place, right? So we'll just add them all together. I've got 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 divided by the total number of elements in this sample, which are how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine numbers. Okay, so now we just add them all up. One plus two is three, plus two is five, eight, eleven, fourteen, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-seven. So that's twenty-seven over nine, or just three. Now there's some notation we often use for the mean. The mean pops up so often in, in formulas and whatnot that sometimes you'll see it written as x bar. It's the, the mean of all of these numbers represented by x bar. And if you want a very formal formula for this, uh, x bar is given by, so I'm going to use a big sigma notation here, this sigma summation notation, i equals 1 to n of x sub i over n, the number of elements. Uh, let me let me erase this little box here. So what does this mean? If you're not familiar with summation notation, uh, my index here is i. This tells me I'm going to let i start at 1 and range from 1 up to n. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, count out until you get to n. And that will give me x1, x2, x3, x4, uh, up to xn. And then you just add them all together. So this means plug in i equals 1 to get x1. Plug in i equals 2 to get x2. Uh, plug in i equals 3 to get x3, and just keep going until you get to n, and then you've got x of n, and you add them all together. All right, so you plug in the index to get uh, the different values, and then you add them all together, and then the formula says divide by n. All right, so just a very quick recap of summation notation. But this is how you find uh, this is how you find the mean. It's the arithmetic average. It's the sum of all of the elements in your in your sample uh, divided by the number of elements you have. Next up, we've got uh, the median. What's the median? The median is as long as your elements are in order. So from uh, ordered in, in terms of size, from smallest to largest, then it's the middle element. Alright, so you have to order your list. But this list is already ordered, it's counting up in size. And how many elements do I have? I have nine. So here's element one, two, three, four. Uh, the middle of nine should be five. 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, I've got four elements on this side, four elements on this side, so the fifth element right here in the middle, that's the middle element, 3. So in this case, the mean and the median were the same number, but they don't have to be. But that's all the median is. You, will, you list your data in terms of uh, increasing size, and the element in the middle is, uh, is the median. And then last up, we've got this uh, much less commonly used 
measure of central tendency, but it's the mode, and it's the most frequently occurring number. So, most frequently occurring. So in this list, I have one appears one time, two appears twice, three appears three times, four appears twice, and five appears once. So three is the most frequently occurring number in this list, therefore, three is the mode. So for this sample, the mean, the median, the mode were actually all the same number. They were all three, but they don't have to be. Let's do another example. All right, so uh, just different numbers this time, a different sample of data, but we'll do the exact same thing. I want to find the mean, the median, the mode. So I'll use x bar again for the mean. What do I do? I add all the numbers together, everything in the, in the sample, and I divide by the total number of elements. So 9 plus 10 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 23 plus 23 plus 24. And uh, I divide by the total number of elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight elements. All right, so add all those numbers together. Um, when I added them, I got 134 over 8, which is uh, 16 and 3 quarters. 16 and, and, and 16.75. So there's the mean for this data. By the way, you should always look at it and ask, is it reasonable, right? If I got something bigger than 24 or something less than 9, that wouldn't really make any sense, right? So always ask yourself, is my answer reasonable? Looking at the data, yeah, it looks like it's fairly reasonable. Uh, what about the median? So I want the middle element. There's a problem here, and I want to illustrate sort of things that could happen that didn't happen in the last example. Uh, in the last example, we had an odd number of elements, so there was an actual mi middle. Here I have an even number of elements, so there's three elements here, three elements here, so the middle is sort of both of these elements at the same time. So how do you find the median if, uh, if there is no single element in the middle, if you have an even number of elements and you actually have two in the middle, how do you find the median? The way we define it is you take the average of these two numbers. So the median is the average of 15 and 20. So just add them together, divide by 2, and this is going to be 17.5. In this case, not the same as the mean was, unlike the last example. And last but not least, what's the mode? What's the most frequently occurring number in this list? Well, uh, 10 appears twice, and 23 also appears twice. So which one's more frequently occurring? The answer is neither of them. They're both sort of the most frequently occurring number. So it turns out you just list both of them. Uh, 10 and 23 are both the mode for this, for this uh, sample. And because of this, sometimes you would say the sample is bimodal, if you want to be precise. It has two different modes. It's a bimodal sample. And by the way, I won't do an example of this, but if you ever have a, if you ever have data where you don't have any numbers occurring more than once, so every number just occurs once, uh, the mode in that case is there is no mode. All right, so, I, so you, you really have two choices. If everything just appears once in the list, you either have the choice of saying everything is the mode or nothing is the mode, and uh, we choose to say there is no mode if, if everything just appears once. All right, so that's grouped data, or sorry, that's ungrouped data. I'm sure you've worked with this in the past. Let's move on to group data where things are a little bit different. All right, so here's an example of grouped data. Instead of listing all of my individual ages of the U.S. presidents at uh, their inauguration, I've grouped them into ranges, into, into, into intervals. So... A uh, number of presidents that were somewhere between age 39 and a half and 44 and a half when they were inaugurated, two of them. Somewhere between 44 and a half and 49 and a half years old, seven of them. 
and, uh, and so on. So I've grouped them into, the, into these different ranges. And the question is, if you have uh, grouped data like this, how do you find the median, or the mean and the median? Well, here's how you do the mean. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to take the midpoint of each of the intervals. So the midpoint of 39 and a half and 44 and a half, the midpoint of this interval, exactly halfway between these two numbers, is 42. So the, the average of the two endpoints is 42, the midpoint of the interval is 42, and I'm going to think of having a list where I have the age 42 appearing twice. So I multiply it by 2. And I'm going to do that for all of these. I'm, I've got uh, the next interval with the midpoint of 44 and a half and 40, 49 and a half is exactly 47. And imagine I had a list where I now have 47 appearing seven times. So I would add plus 47, plus 47, plus 47, seven times, just multiply it by seven. And I'm going to do this for every single one of these intervals. Uh, so this gives me a next interval, midpoint is 52, that appears 12 times. I'm going to run out of space here, unfortunately. Next interval, midpoint is 57, appears 13 times. I guess I'll start putting brackets around everything. Uh, next interval, midpoint of this guy is 62, appears 7 times. Then, next interval, midpoint is 67, frequency of twice. 72, frequency of twice. Alright, so what I'm saying is you can sort of think of this as I'm ungrouping this, but I'm taking the average of each of these intervals. So for example, here I've got the data 42 and 42 appearing twice. Then I've got 47, 47 appearing seven times. And if I list out all of that data, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding them all together and dividing, as usual, by the total number of elements in that list, which would be the cumulative frequency that this occurs. So um, the question is, does this include Biden or not? So add up all the frequencies. Uh, 2 plus 7 is 9, plus 12 is 21, plus 13 is uh, 34, plus 7 is 41, 43, 45. Okay, so it doesn't. So divided by 45 total. All right, so maybe I lost you with the explanation there, trying to think of, of an individual list or ungrouping, ungrouping the data. But all you do when you have group data is you take the midpoint of the interval, multiply it by the frequency. Then the midpoint of the interval, multiply it by the frequency. Midpoint of the interval, multiply it by the frequency. Add them all together, and then divide by the cumulative frequency. Divide by the total number of elements in the list. So 45 in this case. And if you do this, I already uh, plugged this into a calculator. I got 55.33. Okay. So there's the method for finding the mean for group data. What about the median? Well, what you might want to do is just say, what about the median class? What class sort of falls in the middle? I have 45 total, right? In this list, of my total frequency is 45. So the midpoint of 45 would be 22.5. And where does that occur? Well, my cumulative frequency here is 2, 9, 21. So 22.5, the 22 and a half the person, would fall in this region, right, through here. So the, uh, the median class is 54.5 to 59.5. And that's usually uh, quite often, that's as far as people will take their analysis. They will say, well, I, I have the median class. That's good enough for me. It's, it's the, the middle class here in, in sort of thinking about the cumulative frequency. But uh, 
Our textbook goes a little further. Our textbook gives us a method for actually trying to find the median among this median class. And I'm going to approach this slightly differently than the text. We'll get the same answer regardless, but I'm just going to give you a formula here. All right, so here's the median. The median is given by L plus N over 2 minus big F all over little f times c. Now we just have to plug things into this formula. What are these things? All right, so L, big L, is the lower bound of the median class. So 54.5. This is the lower bound of the median class. Little f, little f is the frequency of the median class, so 13. What is capital N? Capital N is the sum of all frequencies. It's the cumulative frequency across uh, the, entire, the entire list. So we had 45 presidents. It would be 45 in this case. So it's the sum of all frequencies. Capital F, on the other hand, capital F is the sum of all frequencies of the classes that come before the, uh, the median class. So in this case, it would be 2 plus 7 plus 12. Right, so capital F is a sum of all frequencies before uh, the median class. And last but not least, this expression C. C is the, the integral width of the... Uh, of the median class. Turns out in this example all of the, all of the classes have the same width, but the, uh, the interval width of the median class, 54.5 to, to 59.5, that's width of 5. Right, so this is the uh, median class interval width. So we already talked about these things. Um, lower bound of the median class, 54.5. Plus, now we've got the sum of all frequencies. We already agreed if we add all these frequencies together, we get 45 over 2. Minus the sum of all frequencies before the median class. We've identified this is our median class. So the sum of all frequencies before, 2 plus 7 is 9 plus 21 or plus 12 is 21, over the frequency of the median class, 13, times the median class interval width. Uh, the width of this, you can take one endpoint minus the other, so 59.5 minus 54.5 is 5. And again, plug this into a calculator. I got that this was approximately 55. 0.08. Again, always ask yourself if your answer looks reasonable. Based on this data, it certainly looks reasonable. Um, and it should always, whatever you get, it should be a number that falls within your, your actual median class. 55.05 does indeed fall in this, in this interval. If it didn't, you must have made a mistake somewhere with the calculations. So all of this Again, if you want to approach this the way the textbook does, which is slightly different, thinking about areas, that's fine. But all of this is a really nice formula for finding the median based on already knowing the median class. You can do more. You can ask things like, what's the modal class? What's the most frequently occurring uh, class in this list? Well, 13 is the, is the most frequent. So again, the modal class is the median class. But uh, it doesn't look like our textbook ever asks anything about modal classes. So just to show you how this formula works one more time, we'll just do one more example.
All right, so no words or anything behind this. Here's just some data. Uh, my class interval is 3.5 to 5.5, 5.5 to 7.5, 7.5 to 9.5, and so on. And relative frequencies of 4, 2, 3, 5, 4, and 3. So here's my data, and we'll compute the mean. As we did last time, how do I do that? I take the midpoint of each interval, so midpoint of 3.5 and 5.5, or the average of those two values if you want, it's the same thing. The midpoint is uh, 4.5. And I multiply the midpoint of each interval by its frequency. So 4.5 times 4, and we just add them all together. So midpoint of 5.5 and 7.5 is 6.5 times a frequency of 2. Uh, 7.5 and 9.5 is midpoint is 8.5 times a frequency of 3 plus 9.5 and 11.5 and is 10.5 times a frequency of 5 plus 12.5 times 4 and lastly midpoint of 13.5 and 15.5 is 14.5 times frequency of 3, and I divide that all by the cumulative frequency, uh, the total frequency here, so uh, 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 5 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 3 is 21. So plugging this into calculator, I got 202.5 over 21, which is about uh, 9 is it reasonable? Yeah, it would fall somewhere in this in this range. Uh, it looks like a reasonable answer. All right, always ask yourself: Is is my answer reasonable? So there's the mean. What about the median? Well, once again, let's identify the median class because everything really comes from the median class. Uh, we had that the cumulative frequency was 21. All right, so the halfway point from 0 to 21 would be uh, 10.5. How far out in this list do we have to count before we get to the 10 and a half uh, number? Well, uh, here we have 4, plus 2 is 6. Uh, then we have plus 3 is 9. So plus 5 is 14. So somewhere between 9 and 14 is 10 and a half. So the 10 and a half number... Uh, or element in the list occurs in this interval. So our median class is 9.5 to 11.5. But you're going to see problems that don't ask for the median class. You're going to see problems that ask for the median. So once again, we come to our formula. All right, we've got L plus N over 2 plus big F over little f times C. And now we just have to plug in these values. L is the lower bound of the median class, 9.5, uh, plus N, cumulative frequency of the entire thing. So uh, uh, we added all these. We have 21 numbers, right? So this was 21 over 2. I think I have a mistake. This would be minus, right? Hopefully, I wrote minus on the first formula. Uh, so n over 2 minus f, minus f, uh, what was f? f was the cumulative frequency of all of the intervals before the median class. So add these together. 4 plus 2 plus 3 is 9. Minus 9 divided by little f. What's little f? Little f was the frequency of the median class. So divided by 5. And then last but not least, times c. c is the width of the median class interval. 11.5 uh, minus 9.5, that's width 2. Plug this into a calculator, I got about 10.1. Again, make sure it's reasonable. It should fall somewhere in this interval. It does. It's somewhere between 9.5 and 11.5. So it seems like a reasonable answer to me. 
Uh, once again, if, if it ever asked you for what's the modal class, well, the modal class most frequently occurring class is, again, this one, 9.5 to 11.5. But I don't think the textbook ever says anything about modal classes. All right, so obviously grouped data is a little bit more tricky to work with. There's a little, little bit more going on, and it's probably something you haven't seen uh, or more or less likely to have seen as opposed to finding mean, median mode for, uh, for ungrouped data. But I think with two examples, we'll call this good. And once again, if you want to find the median, I recommend using this formula, but the textbook does it slightly differently if you want to look at that. Thanks.